All treats, no tricks, and nothing but sweet Halloween dreams. Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Hanging with my favorite Halloween queens, Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling, Tracy of Tracy Vanover Designs, and Martina of The Secret Craft Room for the Tricksters with Treats collaboration. You know I love creating for Halloween, and I'm in good company. Links to their channels, as well as the talent-packed playlist, are in the description box. I'm creating Candy Head. Let's get into it. I'm using two 5.6 inch foam balls. I wanted both to be the crunchy kind. However, they only had one crunchy and one smooth. So yeah, that's how we're rolling today. I cut a small flat spot at the end of my crunchy foam ball. And I grabbed my hot wire tool and cut about a third of the top off. This tool is just like a long wire that heats up and cuts right through styrofoam. It pretty much melts it, so it's very hot. So if you have one, be very careful. Ah, uh, it could be neater, but you know what? It'll do. Okay, so here's why I prefer the crunchy kind to the smooth ones. The smooth jobbies are difficult to cut with any kind of precision, at least for me. We're going to do a wee bit off the bottom and a wee bit off the top. Yeah, and I kind of jacked that up again. Well, we'll make it work. You know we will. So I just want these two balls to stack on top of each other. That's why I'm making the flat spots. So I'm going to be using creative paper clay today. I've been wanting to try it, and I snagged it when it was 40% off. It's usually like $13 for 16 ounces. So fingers crossed that it works well. They didn't have any of the model magic, so I thought I'd give this a go. Since our surfaces are much larger than usual, I grabbed a good handful and I'll condition it by kneading it really well. This stuff takes more conditioning and manipulation than my go-to clay, model magic. I'll flatten the clay with my brayer and I'll start by covering the larger flat part of the crunchy ball. This is going to be his head, of course, so I'm going to press this down really firmly. And now I'm just going to add more clay and smaller pieces in sections until his head is completely covered. I smooth the clay with my fingers and by rolling it on the table just like I would if I was using Model Magic. It's very hot here, so I'm keeping my flattened clay under a damp towel so it doesn't dry out. I'll roll out logs of clay, tapering one end. These will be the ribs of my pumpkin. And as I roll these out, I'm really just guesstimating the length because we can always cut them down if we need to. Now, I'll attach them around the head. I'm leaving a gap a few inches wide where his face is going to be. I want to say I left about a four inch gap. Yeah, see, I'm just looking to check to see how much space I want there. And that looks good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to score the area where the ribs going to go. It'll help the clay to stick to itself. I'm using a wee wire brush to do this. And I'm going to add some water to smooth it and keep it damp. And now I'm going to cut off the excess and I'm going to put that extra clay under my damp cloth. I'll incorporate the clay with my clay tool and I'll use the handle to roll over where the rib clay meets the clay on the ball. And you can see I'm just using my fingers to smooth it out. I'll use the palm of my hand to kind of flatten it a wee bit and to shape it and I'll spritz it with water every now and then whenever I feel like it's getting too dry. I really just want to work this so that it looks like it's all one piece of clay. I don't want any defined lines right here. Right, so I'm going to repeat this with each rib. There are nine in total and I leave a gap between each rib about I don't know, maybe an inch or so, except for that space where his face will be, that's four inches. So I grabbed a piece of one of the ribs that I had cut off, and I'm going to create his chin with that. I place it at the bottom of the gap where his face will be between the two flanking ribs. And I'm just going to work that until it's incorporated, just like I did with the other ribs. I roll a long, thin snake of clay, 
which I'll use to trim out the top of the pumpkin. And I'm just pressing it into place, incorporating it just like I did with the ribs. So far, I like the feel of this clay. It's easy to smooth it out, and we'll see how it holds up. Okay, so there we go. And now I'm just going to come in and do the same thing, just kind of work that clay so that it looks like it's all one piece. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's set that aside for now. Now for this smooth ball, I'm going to texturize it a wee bit by pouncing it with a scrub brush. This will allow the clay to adhere to it better. And now I'm going to cover it with clay the exact same way I did before. See, look how nice and smooth it is. Yeah, it's pretty good. I roll another thick log of clay, and I'm going to cut it in half lengthwise to create his arms. And I'm going to use two toothpicks to anchor the arms, one at the shoulder and one at the wrist. I actually broke the toothpicks in half because... I couldn't get them all the way in to the clay. I just couldn't manage that, so I snapped them off about halfway, I guess. I add some tacky glue to the flat side of the arm before attaching it to the toothpicks and incorporating it into the clay. I wanted to make sure that this clay stayed in place. Right, so once I got it on there, I did the same thing. I dampened it a little bit and then just used my fingers and used the handle of my paintbrush and some of my clay tools to make sure that that clay was incorporated to the clay on the body. To anchor the head to the body, I'm going to push a thick skewer into the center top of the body. I push it, I guess, about two thirds of the way down. Took a wee bit of muscle. <laughs> So I'm going to add some tacky glue to the skewer and to the clay before I attach the head. And I'm just going to make sure that the head is centered before I push it down. I fill in the gap between his head and the body with a snake of clay. And I'm basically just gonna use my fingers to make sure that it's pushed in there really well, and then I'll roll over it with the brush handle. Now, I'm gonna set him aside once this is done. I'm gonna set him aside to dry, and he did take about 48 hours to dry, but he is a big piece, so it took both packages of the clay to complete this. There was a wee bit of cracking, but it's really not too bad. So I'm just going to go with it. I thought I might have to sand him, but no, he looks good. Right, so he's ready for paint. His head gets two coats of Ceramcoat pumpkin. His body is going to get two coats of Americana bleached sand. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's similar to the color of the clay. But when it dries, it will be a wee bit darker. After the two coats of bleached sand, I'll come back in and paint his hands with pumpkin. And the top of his head is going to get two coats of Ceramco charcoal. I don't know. I should have thought of that before I painted it orange. But no biggie. I'm going to use charcoal for his eyes and for his mouth. You know, I did sketch on his eyes ahead of time with a pencil. And his mouth, I'm just going to freehand. So I used my detail brush to outline them. And now I'm using a flat brush to fill them in. Oh, 
And we're just going to give him a cute, happy wee grin. While his features dry, I'm going to come in and polka dot his body with pumpkin. Slightly smaller dots with hippo gray, and even smaller dots with calypso orange. I dab on his cheeks using a dauber and Americana cadmium orange. I dot his eyes with white using a piece of cardstock to mask off the area above the eye so I don't get any white there. And I white dot highlight his cheeks too. I outline his eyes with hippo gray and he's going to get little character lines. Again, I'm using a detail brush for this. Now let's outline his mouth and give him some eyebrows too. Eyebrows are important because they really add expression to the face, make it come to life. The eyebrows are just wee comma strokes. His cheeks are getting Calypso orange swirls, and at some point, I do give his chin a swirl too. Now I'm going to give him hippo gray pupils. I'll stripe his sleeves with Calypso, pumpkin, and hippo to match his polka dots. I dry brush his face with cadmium orange. I'm really focusing around his features. I'm going to add a little spot for his nose, where his nose is going to go. And then I'm going to do along the ridges of the ribs, and of course I'll do his hands as well. I really want to get that color in there where the shadow would be. makes a huge difference. So I'm just going to continue that until I'm happy with the depth of color, and then I'm going to come back in with Hippo and dry brush him completely, body and head. Let's add some white highlights to his cheeks, and then I'm going to do a little bit under his mouth. Aha, here comes the chin swirl. <laughs> I dry brush some white highlights on him, you know, for a little lift. And now before we go any further, I'm going to pounce on some sealer. This is multi-purpose sealer by Deco Art, and I'm using a cosmetic sponge for this. I have some of my cray paper festooning to trim his neck and his wrists. I'll link my festooning video in the description box. This stuff is so easy to make, and I just love it. I'm using 3-in-1 glue and a dab of hot glue to attach it. The excess that I cut off, I'll use that around his wrists. You know, I love this festooning gang. I mean, it comes in so handy and it's so easy to make and to buy it, it's outrageously expensive. So trust me, make your own. I'll glue a wee black glitter ball on for his nose and for his buttons. Again, I'm using 3-in-1 glue for this. I got these, I think they're table scatter from the Dollar Tree. 
and you can see I added a wee white dot highlight to his nose. All that's left to do is to fill his head with candy. Now some of the candy I added some skewers so that I could poke holes in the top of his head, which took a bit of doing because when this clay dried, it dried really hard. So I had to actually drill the holes. Other pieces of candy I just needed to glue to the top because they had a flat surface. So I used three in one glue and hot glue for this. And then I filled it in with a little bit of black paper shred. If you want to see how I made the faux candy, that video will be coming up next Friday. So check back. Let's take a final look at Candy Head Jack. I think he turned out really sweet. He's both a little kid and a dentist dream. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Please be sure to check out Dawn, Tracy, and Martina's channels, as well as the playlist. You know it's jam-packed with fab Halloween goodies. Links will be in the description box, along with a list of my supplies. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.